Hello everybody, welcome back to the ASUS ROG YouTube channel. This is JJ once again. We've got something pretty cool for you. What we're going to be focusing on today is actually giving you a little bit of information regarding some of ASUS's design technologies such as our DigiPlus power control implementation and our TPU technologies. As part of the X79 chipset launch, ASUS has gone ahead and introduced a number of key hardware designs on our series of motherboards to help extend performance as well as make overclocking easier. Part of these actual design implementations you can physically see on the board. We're going to go ahead and take a look here at actually our P9 X79 Deluxe board. We can actually see here, uh, actually at the top, we actually have a logo message of actually this design implementation. This is our Dual Intelligent Processors 3. Dual Intelligent Processors is actually a hardware-based implementation design that we've had for a couple of generations. What this actual design does is provides to us digital power delivery to not only the CPU, but now in this generation, as well as extends power delivery, as well as control for both the CPU and for the DRAM. You can actually see the digital controller here on the board. This one specifically actually would be for the CPU, and there's actually two additional controllers for each bank of memory. In addition to that, as part of the Dual Intelligent Processors 3, implementation, we also have actually our TPU. This TPU chip actually is going to be doing some pretty cool things on the motherboard. Essentially what we're going to be doing is going to be automatically overclocking the platform utilizing this actual hardware chip. So let's go ahead and actually just jump straight actually into um, one of the actual options that we offer here. We can see on the bottom board we actually have a TPU switch. This TPU switch will actually automatically detect the CPU that you have actually installed in the system, whether it's the K part or the stream ignition part, and from there automatically make an adjustment to overclock the CPU. In addition to that, you actually also have an option within our UEFI, when you're within the easy mode interface, to click on this icon, this optimal icon. This icon will actually execute the same function as the actual TPU switch on the motherboard. What both of these actually offer is the ability to go ahead and take your CPU from running at the maximum frequency under turbo of 3.6 gigahertz and extending it to approximately 4.3 gigahertz. So what we're going to go ahead and do is actually jump into the operating system, execute this, and see what kind of performance increase we can get. So we're going to go ahead and just hit F10, we're going to go ahead and reboot, and we're going to get good to go. Now one of the key things that we want to point out is that definitely of course with overclocking, you know, you're never guaranteed your results, and you always want, do want to consider a couple of key aspects. When putting together your system, cooling is of, of the utmost importance. We can actually see here in our chassis, this Corsair carbide, that we've gone ahead and picked it because we have optimal airflow. We can see here that we actually have two top-mounted 120 millimeter fans that we actually have downward firing to go ahead and give us great airflow for not only our dims, but for the heat sinks on the VRM. This also works out well for the closed water loop uh, heat sink configuration that we have with this Corsair H60, where we're exhausting the hot air from the CPU out of the chassis, and we have the cold air coming down here. So keep this in mind definitely when you're actually setting up your system. So as we can see here, we've gone ahead and completed actually our boot. We're in Windows, and what we're gonna go ahead and do now is jump into AI Suite 2. AI Suite 2 is actually our exclusive software application that links up directly actually with the Dual Intelligent Processors 3 hardware on the motherboard. So that TPU chip and that digital power controller that we discussed, we're essentially going to be interfacing directly with those from within the operating system. So we're going to go ahead and open this application up. And from here we have a button that says Auto Tuning. With Auto Tuning, all we're going to need to do is click on the button that says Fast. Fast will automatically go ahead and set up our system for that 4.3 gigahertz overclock. So we're going to go ahead and Press it, start it, and what it will go ahead and do is it will start to send this information, all the required adjustments in terms of voltages, multiplier, any other configurations that are specific to defining this overclock configuration directly to the motherboard, and it will execute and store these settings actually within our UEFI. So this is essentially the same exact thing that if you were actually going into the UEFI, manually defining these values, it's the same exact process, except it's all executed automatically for you, all within the convenience of actually going into the desktop, executing one click, and being good to go. So as we can see here, the system's actually gone ahead and rebooted a couple of times. It's taking actually that information that's been sent from within the AI Suite 2 application, it's making those adjustments, and when we actually go ahead and boot, we're going to be booting in at that actual new frequency. So even if you were actually to remove our software from the system, 
we would be still maintaining that 4.3 gigahertz overclock. Now once we go ahead and get into the OS, we'll go ahead and run a quick benchmark and go ahead and do a compare and contrast in terms of the performance increase that we had from our previously set 3.6 gigahertz, which was our maximum turbo frequency that was stock, as opposed to now our 4.3 gigahertz, which is our new overclocked frequency. So it's going to be pretty quick here because we're running on this SATA 6G SSD. It's in the desktop here. And we've already gone ahead and run two previous benchmarks, one being ADA64 and Geekbench, which we'll reference shortly. As we can see here, we've made it very easy. We give you an advisory statement that the actual auditing process is successful and that we've successfully completed our overclock of 4.296, so approximately 4.3 gigahertz. So once again, our stock frequency was previously 3.6, and now we're at 4.3. So let's go ahead and open up our previous ADA report here. And at the same time, we'll go ahead and open up ADA itself so we can go ahead and run a quick benchmark and see the actual real-time difference. So we'll go ahead and execute the actual real-time benchmark, which in itself will actually go ahead and also put stress on the CPU. You can see actually here, it's gonna go ahead and start actually utilizing the CPU, stressing the CPU. We've actually worked quite extensively at making sure that this process is stable, efficient, and ensures reliable operation, even though we are now running in excess of that default 3.6 gigahertz. So as this goes ahead and processes through the benchmark, we're gonna go ahead and just take a look here at some of the initial stress that's being put on the CPU as it's running through the actual benchmark. Okay, so as we can see here, we've gone ahead and actually completed the actual benchmark successfully without any issues. We could definitely see at times we're actually getting close to 100%. And one of the other impressive things is we can actually see here that we have all eight DIMMs populated. So our auto-tuning technologies have been designed that even in the most stressful configurations, we're still able to go ahead and execute this high-level overclock. So as we have here now, we're gonna go ahead and scroll down to our initial results and we can see here that actually our memory frequency was slightly increased, so we do have a bit of an increase in actual overall throughput. But what we're gonna go ahead and actually take a look at is actually CPU, because that's where we're gonna see the biggest gains. So let's take for instance here, CPU Queen. And with CPU Queen, we can see that we've jumped up now from our base score previously of 62,356 to now a new score of 74,121. So we have an overall considerable increase. And one more benchmark for reference is PhotoWorks, which is a highly multi-threaded aspect benchmark. So very similar to if you were doing photo editing or video editing, we can see the type of increase that might be offered as well. So here we went from a baseline score of 90,000 to now 93,000, all in the click of a button. So this shows you some of the actual inherent benefits that we have with Dual Intelligent Processors 3. Now let's actually take a look at extending the performance even further with auto-tuning and the extreme preset.